Report came out last week, uh, CNBC published an article that says basically 43% of homeowners are holding off on home improvement projects right now uh, because of inflation, holding on to the cash. Like there is a scare out there right now, a little bit of a recession that's looming. Because uh, everybody's talking about it. Every news channel, yep. every YouTuber. I mean, and something is coming. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on a economist I'm not, I don't work at the Federal Reserve uh, I won't make any bold predictions but we're definitely seeing some changes we're here in Minneapolis uh, we just heard someone talk yesterday about during the COVID recession basically one half of the roofing contractors in Denver I think the Denver market uh, went out of existence during that three month period over that summer um, and that's something we don't want to see happen during this looming recession we saw it again in 2008 a lot of companies shut down um, and so we're a huge advocate of hey we know what the numbers look like 65% of homeowners financed their home improvement projects last year in 2021. Companies wow. that offer financing close 20 to 30% more jobs and homeowners spend 18 to 24% more money. With people holding on to their cash, we want to make sure that companies aren't getting left behind, aren't being a casualty to this looming economy uh, that has a lot of people scared right now. Um, so I, I think offering financing is not only a really smart solution, I think it's a necessary one right now. What's the state of the financing industry for contractors? Because if you look at the automotive, mm -hmm. it's really well developed. Mm -hmm. So many players, you go apply for a car, you get 10, 15 offers, just like that. I mean, almost with any credit, you can get good car, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you might pay a little bit more, but because car is collateral, it's still, you know, pretty safe for financial institutions to give you car loans. With um, home improvements, what I've noticed, amount of declines is insane. Um, your boss is, was sharing a story with me how in a bad neighborhood, you know, out of 100, they would get like two approvals because everybody has low score. Why is that? And is there any players? Because I know like Green Sky, Service Finance, they're also playing it safe. They mm -hmm. say they, you know, same as cash and stuff, but if you ha don't have 750 plus, you have pretty bad chances of actually getting home improvement loan. Why that industry is so different than car industry? Because in reality, you know, home is even better collateral, or is it? Yeah, so um, I mean, there are all different kinds of financing. Uh, so when you're looking at automobile, obviously you have collateral. You know, you can always repossess a house. It's really hard to repossess a roof. Uh, that is a risk uh, that a bank is going to, lenders is going to take on. Can you lean or what actions can you take as a finance company if homeowners stop paying for that roof or yeah, siding or? Yeah, so lenders, I mean, lenders will go about it any way any other debt collector is going to. You know, they're, they're going to start with, you know, it could be property liens. I mean, it could be forcing. Can you affect their credit store uh, score? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, we don't, we, you know, we're not the lender, uh, but our partner lenders, obviously, if you default on something, if you can't make the payments, um, that's going to have an effect on your credit score. That's going to have, you know, the, the normal things, just I mean, you, you can repossess. I know a few people who will take your roof back. <laughs> <laughs> Kitchens back. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually happening every once in a while. Yeah. You, you see news stories like someone gets pissed and they go and take it back. <laughs> that, if you don't that, pay a contract. Li, li, <laughs> if you don't take a roof back, that's a lot of work. Because it's harder to go after the client, um, there's more denials. Yeah, so there's more risk involved with lenders. And, and, and here's the reality. Um, People don't like to talk about home loans. I mean, obviously, you know, what we hear on the radio, what we hear in marketing, you know, when you hear the the Cadillac commercials, you know, get 0%, you know, for 48 months, most people don't get approved for that. That's basically Peyton Manning or Bradley Cooper who's driving those cars in those commercials. Those are the people getting approved for those. The most average humans not getting approved for that. Uh, but it's great marketing technique. Uh, the reality of it is, and it's not misleading. I mean, if you have this, it, yeah, you get this. A, there, there's a little fine. There's always fine print. There's always a fast talking guy at it, right? You know they're, what they should do. Those things. You know what they should do. You know how in uh, medical uh, commercials, like my kids cracking it all the time uh, when we're saying that we don't have TV, so we don't listen to commercials. But we go to the hotel, and there would be a commercial for medicine. And at the end, they have to read the fine print. Yep. Side effects might affect, <laughs> like, I'm going to die if I use it. They, I don't know why it's probably not regulated as much as medicine, but they should read out loud about all of that. The fine print in financial offers. Yeah, I, I, I think there's, I think the general public's been misled a lot about financing. I think we've been misled a lot about, you know, 
just general economics. Like, it's things. always the sexiest thing out there. But you know what doesn't sell? Like the, the median credit score in the US uh, isn't a great selling point. Uh, the medium, you know, interest rate. What's the, what's the medium credit score? Uh, so I, I haven't seen the numbers from this past quarter. Uh, I think last quarter it was 691 in the US, uh, which is up, you know, from the year before. Um, it usually hangs around 680 to 690, oh. um, which is in terms of lenders, you know, below prime credit. When you talk about prime credit, you're usually talking 720. Uh, when you talk about <sighs> premier prime credit, you're talking 760 and above. So what we see in our market is without naming names of other banks, you know, that's not something we do, but you know, a lot of approvals um, with those really, really attractive rates, you see it like, you know, because they're publicly traded companies, we, we know this information, uh, we, we see approvals, you know, at median of origination at 768 to 775. Well, hell, I'll, I'll lend somebody $15,000 that has a 775 credit score. Um, that's not a lot of risk that, that people are taking on, but the contractor's also paying dealer fees on top of that. So even mitigating that risk even more. So that's, that's kind of way we like our model is because you know we have 30 different lenders basically competing for a customer's business, uh, finding the best rate. You know, I, I don't like saying it, but a lot of people say it, so I might as well start saying it. You know, it's, it's price line of, of consumer finance. Got you it. Know, everyone wants convenience. Let's find the best thing out there for you uh, in the most realistic way. So, so um, Intensify is a price line of finance. I don't know if we're legally allowed to say that. I can say it. You I'm can, a YouTuber. Yeah. I can say anything I want. What are they gonna do about it? The best practice: how to sell finance. What do you see that works? You, you do three, three, four hundred loans a month. Yep. Like what really works? People who sell those three, four hundred. What are they doing that others are not doing? So I, I think that the number one thing is they are talking about financing with every single customer every single time. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you go into, because people with a lot of money still finance. finance. People with little money they finance and everyone in between finances. Like I said, 65% of the homeowners last year financed their home improvement projects. I see. And so people that lead with it, you know, I always like using the term, um, when, when I was in sales, I would walk in and say, hey, 50% of my customers like to, you know, pay with check or cash. The other 50% like to finance through affordable monthly payment. Dimitri, help me out here. Which bucket do you fall into? It's not, a, it's not offensive. We're not asking him, hey, hey, do you have the money to pay for this? But at the same time, you kind of are. As a sales guy, you want to know how your customers will pay for the job. I see this starts that conversation. And then you can guide them down which path. Hey, I got cash in my pocket here. Cool. Let me get on your roof, inspect it. We'll get you taken care of. Or yes, I am interested in those monthly payments. You're suddenly the most you know, convenient person on the block. If they're getting multiple quotes, probably one in three roofing companies even offer financing. Um, so there's, yeah, are you more convenient than the next guy? Probably yes. Uh, you're giving them more options. You're making it easier for them to buy. As a sales guy, and when I train sales teams, the number one thing uh, that you have gotta be is easy for the customer. We all want that easy button, right? That was easy. No one wants to work. Your customers don't want to work for the sale. You've gotta work for the sale for them and do all the hard stuff for them. Got it. Well, thank you so much. Yeah.